Hi, so this is a laser cutter. Now, it was in 1960 when Theodore Mehman made the first sort of working laser that cut something and did something, and it was 1967 that Boeing, who took the CO2 laser, actually made a working system that could engrave and cut. But it wasn't really until 1975 that they got that down to a desktop version. Now, all lasers consist of three main components. There's this bit, which is the laser in a bed to move it around. Then there's some method of controlling that. And then, of course, there's the surface that you're going to cut or burn. And it wasn't until the 80s and 90s when computer control came in that they really started to take off. And with the CO2 laser, of course, you got a lot of those 30-watt, 40-watt Chinese lasers that people were buying and using. But they weren't the most um, comfortable thing to use because you need to keep them cool. So they had a big bucket of water, a pump system, and of course it's a laser, so it's burning stuff. So you needed a ventilation system as well. And although they were sort of an in inverted commas home versions, you still needed a bit of a shop and a bit of know-how how to get them going. And lots of people were using them and they're tremendously useful things, but they were kind of restricted because of that. Now, oddly enough, so that's in 1962 where Robert Hall came out with the first diode laser. Because diode lasers, for a very long time, were particularly well powered, which is why you saw them restricted to things like uh, laser discs, CDs, DVDs, and of course they're all dying out now because of memory storage. But that was the use of diode lasers for a very long time. It was in the 1970s that we got continuous wave operation from a diode laser and it began to be able to do something real. Now the advantage of diode lasers of course is they don't need that cooling system and so they can be very much more compact and very much more simple in their construction and in their use. And over the years, in the early 2000s, 2010, you started seeing diode lasers coming in. Now, of course, diode lasers were quoted by the power that they consumed rather than the optical power, the power at that laser point. And they were still relatively underpowered. You could engrave with them, but cutting with them was a challenge. But that, again, steadily improved over time until you got things like Vigotech. Now, this is the uh, Alfero Laser 2, and it was sent to me by Arturo to have a look at, and I thought, well, if they're going to send me one, I'd be a little cracked to say no, because of course I've had quite a few lasers in the time, from CO2 lasers to the early diode lasers to this machine here, and they sent it me to give it a go, because I'm more interested in cutting than I am in anything else. I'm not really an engraver. I, I like to cut things as part of models and put them together. So this particular machine comes with a choice of laser. This one is the LU24LF. The LF stands for Long Focus. There's an LU24SF, which is a short focus, and then there's an LU2. The LU2 is about 1.6 watts of optical power output. So another thing that Afaro are doing, or that Auto are doing, is um, quoting this by the power at which it's being output, which is pretty cool because it gives you a good idea of whether the thing is going to cut or not. So the LU2 is about 1.6 watts. Great if you're going to be restricted to engraving, you want to do a million passes to cut something out. But the uh, LU2-4 goes up to about 5 watts, I believe, something around about that. And the SF is meant for engraving. It will cut, but it's actually meant more for engraving. And the LF is meant more for cutting. It will engrave, but it's meant more for cutting. So, of course, I went for the LF head, which is this head here. So, we've got ourselves a laser engraver cutting machine. Now, this machine costs about $266, which is not fantastically expensive when you think the Chinese CO2 laser cost, uh, I think it's about £300, £350, something like that. But this is uh, cheaper, which is we'd expect, because everything is getting that much more uh, inexpensive as these things get more electronically controlled. And of course, with this, if you get a fault, it's going to be in this bit here. And because of its modular design, it's much easier to replace everything. I was having a bit of a trouble with the mirrors and the lensing system in the CO2, and then the CO2 laser itself actually went in a new laser's about 70 or 80 pounds. So mending a CO2 laser and keeping up with it and having all the ancillary requirements really meant you need to know your stuff and have a bit of room. Because of these things, what it means is you're more focused on the artwork and less focused on the technical detail of the machine, which is great. Now, 
also have paid attention to that. So the assembly of this is just such a piece of cake. I haven't bothered doing how to assemble it because it's ludicrous how easy it is to assemble an auto. On their website have an assembly video which is a, uh, one of the best ones I've seen actually because all you do is a couple of screws. There's a couple of screws at each corner. Long one that way, short one that way. You put those screws in all four corners, you drop this bit on and attach four uh, little bolts to it and the thing is assembled. Now these wires have to be clipped together and the only thing you need to remember really are the two earthing wires. There's one here that screws into the screw there and there's one on the laser head that screws in there. You remember that then you're really on a challenge to get this wrong. So it came with all the tools needed to put it together, well say all the tools, actually an allen key and a press out spanner, and these bits here, these are bits of the air system, because it's air assist, but you do need a compressor to run that, and I don't have one, so I'm, I'm not going to use the air assist, if you've got a compressor, use the air assist. So once you've built your machine, which really, it's a five minute job, honestly, you need to focus the laser, but Otto have thought of that, each head is a different little thing to focus it with, but it's based on gauges. For the long focus, that's it, is that bar. You stick that bar underneath the laser bit, right there, the laser case, there's a thumb screw there, twiddle the thumb screw, drop it down onto the bar, and it's focused. With the other heads, there's little orange plates that you use in order to focus it, but the focusing, it's an absolute piece of cake. So the thing is really easy to set up and get ready for using, and it's got some cute little things about it, actually. The bottom of the feet got little holes, and that's obviously meant so you can fasten that firmly to some work surface or a board if you're going to move it around or something like that. There's some cute graduation marks here, little ruler, so you get an idea of where this is. Then it has one interesting functional point to it. It has no home which sounds like a pain in the neck to begin with, because how do you know where it is? But having no home means you can position it on the bit of material that you're going to work on pretty accurately and cut that material out. I've always found it a bit of a faff on locating the material so that I can cut the most effectively. Because remember a piece of acrylic, it's about mm, seven to 10 pounds for something like three to five millimeters thick A4. So it's expensive. So you want to use all of it. And I found that having a home and then trying to register everything to that home <laughs> and describe marks and all of the machines so I could put the thing in the right place and this one is dump your material there and wherever you point that well when the machine turns on that's the home now it does have a quirk that comes in on the software when we talk about that in a minute but that function of being able to set it anywhere within the workspace I think is brilliant and the workspace is 390 by 390 millimeters so it's a big workspace that you can be working on to do your cutting out so some nice features Nicely, strongly build, built, very attractive and <laughs> stupidly, stupidly easy to set up. So this machine's actually set up and ready to go. But earlier, remember, I said that it's composed of three parts. And of course, now we're going to look at the software control. But to talk about the software, we'll do that in a separate video because this video is about setting up the machine and getting it ready to run. And the next video we'll do about interfacing it and using it. So I hope you enjoyed it so far. I certainly have. And thank you very much for watching. Look out for the next video and please remember to like and subscribe.